Welcome back to the Namaste Experience. It is Thursday here at Namaste Village. And as always, what a gift and a blessing it is to join. It is a beautiful sunny day here. Crisp morning, bright sunshine, and we are all shining in that light. The peace of God is shining in me now. That's all I know for sure. That's all I know for sure. And I don't really even know that. But sometimes I do. <laughs> and those flashes of realization of the peace of God shining through and as each one of us increase, gain momentum until that's all we know. I like to say, I don't know anything at all. In fact, I usually don't even know that. You see how that kind of cancels it out? I don't even know that. I don't know anything at all. We flow back and forth between knowing, not knowing, knowing, not knowing. And there's a dynamic center point between those two where I can rest and truly know, not think I know or think I don't know, but truly know. And we call that moment now, right now. In fact, today's session is going to be about three words. Two of them, the ego just loves, the split mind loves the first two words. And the third word, it doesn't like at all, not at all. So let's just dive right in and we can go through those words. Let me go ahead and share the screen. So here are the words, then, when, but never now. <laughs> that phrase just kind of came into my mind. Then, when, but never now. This is the, the whole focus of the ego, giving you full license to focus on then, what happened in the past, or when, what might happen in the future, but never really now. Never rest in the now. That's a very dangerous place for the ego, but it's a very safe place for you. Let's read a little bit of this together. The entire thought system of the split mind relies upon two simple words and teaches you to adopt them into every aspect of your life, then and when. The ego is incapable of living in the now because, and this is important, projection is only possible in the future or the past. You projecting what you don't want or don't want to look at within yourself is only possible in the future or the past. It knows that the instant you release the future and the past, you will spring into life. When you release the future and the past, you spring into life. And this is what you promised that you would never do. This is what you literally promised that you would that you would avoid the present moment at all costs. This was the deal you made with the perceptual split part of your mind, that you would avoid this now moment right now at all costs, because the moment you stop projecting outward, the moment that you stop putting what you don't want to see about yourself, whether it be your holiness or your guilt, and project that onto another, the game is up. It's done. Once again, that can only happen right now because there is no projection in the now. There is only the relaxing into the experience itself. So once again, it knows, the ego knows that the instant you release the future and the past, you will spring into light. And this is what you promised you'd never do. You literally promised that you would avoid the present moment at all costs. And what were you promised in return? Okay, here we go. You may not want to hear the answer to that question for it will seem too cruel to endure if you look at it directly. You were promised death if you avoided life as if this was what you wanted. This, this is the greatest trick of the egoic part of your split mind. The 
convincing you that this is what you want, convincing you that death is inevitable and welcome, that you were born in a body but to die, that this is what you wanted. And therefore, because you consider it to be what you wanted, you make it real. You make it seem very real. But now you're coming to the point where you realize this is not what you want. It was never what you wanted. Life is what you choose. Life is the only desire. And life can, for it to be life, must be eternal. If it's not eternal, it's simply the promise of death. The idea that you can contain life for a moment, but it's ultimately going to dissipate. And, and you're given a sort of a, rep, a, a repose if you, re, if you think or believe that, well, there's life after death. But as you're going to hear in a moment, that doesn't solve the problem. So here we go. Now you realize that everything the ego promises is the opposite of what you really want. But it is only recently that this has become clear. That everything the ego offers is the opposite of what you want. Now you realize that the promises of the ego were empty. And that it never had your best interest in mind. Your death guaranteed its continued life, not yours. For even as you moved from one body to the next, you took this dark passenger with you. Even as you move from one incarnation to the next, you bring this dark passenger with to whom you made a promise that you would accept death in the place of life so that it could live, so that the split identity could live. Hear this. And it will continue to retain control until you finally accept life as your only goal and turn your back on death. If you want to slowly release the grip of the ego, it's time for you to accept that the idea of death is just that, an idea. It's not who you want, what you want. And, and, and you may be saying, but here, here I am in a body and it, it, it's inevitable. No, it's not. As you're about to hear, it is not inevitable. In fact, you have heard it said that your one role as a teacher of God is to teach that death is not real. Does that sound familiar? Your one role as a teacher of God is to demonstrate. Teaching is not real unless you are demonstrating something. So you are here to demonstrate that death is not real through the life that moves through you and as you. Are you ready to finally step into that role, the role of being a teacher of God? All you need to do is to say yes. And let the Holy Spirit take the place the ego has occupied until now. You cannot assume control because you have yet to full, become fully present to your true identity. You can't do it. In other words, you have not fully accepted who you are yet. But the Holy Spirit has accepted this for you. This is the key. You in your identity can't do this. But you can have the willingness to allow the Holy Spirit to choose it for you, knowing that it will choose truly rather than what you've done through the split mind, which is to choose falsely, to choose what is not real. But the Holy Spirit has accepted this for you, and that's why you should turn control of your life over to its guidance. Turn control of your life over to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's all. How do you do that? By being willing, by wanting this, having the desire to see only life, to step beyond the realm of death and rebirth and all of these things that we think are inevitable. All this is saying is that this is not inevitable. What you believe to be true, inevitable, ultimate, whatever, is not. What is inevitable is your life, your eternal life, which you can express and experience right here and right now, if you want. If you don't want, okay, come back in 100 years. Go through this cycle a few more lifetimes, if you want. But why? 
I, I don't personally see the point in that. I say now. I say let's do this now. Step into this now moment. Not then or when. Not be locked into those two frames. But to turn everything over to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And step into the now. And in that now moment, you will realize that death is but a choice. Now, what happens to the physical body? I don't know. I wish I could tell you. Do you flash into light? Maybe. I, I think that certainly is what has happened. I don't have to know. I don't have to figure it out. Do you see that me trying to figure it out is just part of me in my identity, trying to lock it, even, lock it down even tighter? Me saying, well, you know, trying to figure out, well, what does happen to the body? You know what? It doesn't matter because you are not your body. Don't try and figure it out. Let it figure you out. Just focus on life. Focus on this, this now moment and let the Holy Spirit do its job. The, the truth is you can't know. You can't understand it. So there's no real need or reason to try to figure it out because you won't. But relax, just relax into the grace of this moment. Shine that light upon each other. Let it release. Let your heart open and release that light, which is so bright within you. And let it happen. The experience is waiting for you. All you need to do is to welcome it. So I hope that wasn't too heavy. And <laughs> but hey, we got we to teach the truth, right, right Vicki? That's it. <laughs> Why don't you take it from here, tag team? All right, let's just take it down to the first grade because that's where I live. <laughs> I just take it right down to, okay, what is, how do I do that right now? And then I'm left with listen and follow. Listen right now and follow only right now. Not later, not for some goal of some outcome, better this, better that. Just listen. And listening is a way of loving. It's a way of being fully present. It's wholehearted. <laughs> listening is, okay, I'm wholeheartedly right here. Here I am, whoever, Holy Spirit, here I am. Here I am. I just want to listen and follow. Now, listen and follow become, for me, and this is probably first grade, but I don't care. I'm a happy first grader. It becomes a way of life that brings with it little surprises and happiness all along the way. All along the way. And listen and follow only happen right now. I can't listen from yesterday, and I can't follow it tomorrow. I can only listen right now. And when I'm not listening, well, then I see my desire is something, is for something. And that something is nothing but another variation of death. What isn't love is fear. What isn't love is murder. It's pretty radical stuff. But what isn't love right now, is a form of murder. Murdering myself, murdering what seems to be my brother. It's a form of separation. And separation is a murdering, it's a killing off of the light that we are, the Christ light that we are. And the only way I know to bring it back into my awareness is listen right now to the guidance that's been given me, the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if I don't leave, you guys are never gonna get this because you're gonna keep looking at me. You gotta know that the voice, the comforter, the direction is within you, within you, not someone outside of you, not even me as Jesus, the living Christ, but within you to find out the comforter, the spirit of your Christ being is within you and as you put all your attention on it and just listen for the desire to listen and simply follow that will bring you into your own experience as the living christ just as jesus was we are it brings us into a natural moment of happiness of loving 
ourselves and whoever seems to be in front of us. Because love can only happen in the present moment. Love doesn't happen yesterday or tomorrow. A memory might happen. A future anticipation might happen. But love only happens now. And listening to our whatever anyone wants to call it, the Holy Spirit, the voice of your higher self, to the light within us wholeheartedly brings us into union of, of love, of what we are. In, and that you can't find out by reading about it. You only find that out by doing it. So listen, and it doesn't matter what the, the prompt is. It doesn't matter if it tells you to grow, cr crochet potholders, <laughs> wash the dishes, drink a cup of tea, call someone on the phone, take a bath, sing a song, listen to music. Just listen and follow it. And don't worry about making mistakes. Make them all. Make mistakes, but say, okay, that wasn't what you meant. Let me, li let me listen better right now. It's always, let me listen better right now. I don't want to desire death anymore. I don't want to make that a promise to my brother here in time. Here, we'll go do this again later. Uh-uh. This is it now. Right now. End, end of the line. And it's the end of the line for everyone that wants to be. Even the Dalai Lama said, it's the end of the line. No more Dalai Lamas after him. This is it. Last reincarnation. Get in the boat now because this is it. Love is here now. Tune into now. Listen to the voice of love right now and follow it. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. So make them and say, oh, I guess I wasn't listening. Let me listen better. Then you turn around and listen again with all your heart. Whatever you, that's the only thing I want. Then it goes back to what you're always talking about, desire. As soon as you see you're thinking of something else, all that does is it exposes your desire for death in that form. I want better health. I want a better job. I want to live in Mexico. I want to live whatever. That's nothing but a desire for time and for more death and for more self-denial. But now is the time of, I'm the living Christ. He says, I'm the light of the world. How does that work? Let me find out. I'm the light of the world. All right, right here, right now. The other day, we, had a, we do a live meeting now here, at, um, at our, not in our apartment, or sometimes here in the lounge. And during the meeting, everyone, everyone had a chance to speak, and they were speaking about different issues they were facing. And the meeting is based on stabilizing, living in the Christ mind, right now. That's all that we come together for. So everyone's going over what their issue is. And, I, and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm thinking, wow, everyone's issue has to do with a role they play. I'm the mother, I'm the abused daughter, I'm the this, I'm the that. And just like that reading said, because we've denied our real identity, and in the moment, instead of being the hurt child, the abused friend, the mother, the whoever. No, I'm the light of the world. I'm the living Christ. Let me find out what that means. I don't need to get more ready for it. I just needed to ask the question and then listen and be here. Only right now can I get the answer. Can I be the answer? And everyone realized, because it was so clear, that they were desiring a role, some outcome, a better mother, a better daughter, a better relationship. Instead of, no, I want to just be the light that I am. I want to be the living Christ that I am right now. In simplicity, by just listening and following now. That's it. Stay in the now. Bless everything that comes to us. Because if you're not judging it, you can't do anything but bless it anyway. So don't take a role as your identity. I'm the mother, the father, the this, the that. Let the living Christ be our only identity. Wow. First, that's it. Let the living Christ be your only identity. <laughs> you could have just said those words, and, and that would have summed up everything else you said. Let the living Christ be your only identity. Right here, right now. Not in the future, not in the past. It can't happen in either of those two places. But right now, your identity is the living Christ. Accept it, choose it, choose that which has always chosen you, and that springing into light is automatic. Wow, thank you, Vicki. Amazing, as always. Thank you, brother.
Yeah. It's so nice to, to have the two of you to, to, to just take this idea and ground it in a way that is so important. So Teddy, good morning to you. What would you like to share? Well, there was two things that came to me. Um, number one is, you know, like Helen's Notes, the book I just produced, Helen's Notes. One of the benefits of reading something like Helen's Notes is the idea that if Jesus is still talking to Helen, then obviously there's no death because Jesus is still talking to Helen. So he didn't really go anywhere. So whatever seemed to happen to him, it's not exactly what happened to him because he's talking to Helen, so he must be alive somewhere, and Helen's listening, she must be alive somewhere too. And that's one of the major things, to learn that there is no death, you know, like Claire coming to you. Yeah. You know, Claire, after Claire transitioned, she came to Vicky. obviously that means that she didn't die, so something else happened. We've called it death, but it, maybe it's something else a transition. And the other part is, like what's what you're speaking about, you know, I was promised that I don't have to do this again, like the Dalai Lama. And I was told that others don't have to do it also. They just have to decide. And in that, everything that they need to get done to fulfill their function will come to them because it's in fulfilling our function in the plan that releases us from the need for the plan here. It's not what we think we do as people in space and time. It's fulfilling our function. So people who are listening to us today, hey, you guys just got to say, wow, I don't want to do this anymore and join the club. Then everything that you need to do will be given to you to do, not so that you fulfill a role in space and time, but so you fulfill your role in God's plan for salvation. And then you're done here. And many of you, everyone has the ability to be done here by their decision and allow what's meant to come to them to do, to be given to them. And I assure you, if you're given something to do, you can do it. As the cat says, meow, yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you know, as you were talking, Teddy, I, I was seeing an image in my mind that I, I think explains this quite well. Uh, and for some reason, I'm seeing this through the filter of the Shawshank Redemption. And if you imagine having been in a, a prison for so long that the prison becomes your reality, it is your home. You can't even imagine life outside the institution and in the prison. You have maybe there's a group of friends that you that you really enjoy. Maybe there's a, a club or a, maybe even a, a quiet spot, the library in the prison that you really like. And finally, it comes time for you to leave the prison. Right. And because you made the prison a home, thinking that this is where you belong, what do many prisoners do? is called recidivism, recidivism, something like that. They immediately commit another crime so that they have to go back to prison. They have to go home because they've mistaken where their home is. They think the prison is their own. They don't feel at, at home anywhere but in the prison with the friends in that quiet spot in the library. And, and all you're saying, Teddy, and all I'm saying is you don't have to go back there. The, the prison is not your world, just as the prison of your ideas of, of this world is not your real home. And you don't have to keep coming back here lifetime after lifetime, like a prisoner going back into the prison, because you found something here that felt like home. You don't need to find something that feels like home, you just need home. And when you finally spring into the experience, you'll realize that the prison was never your home, that there was a whole world outside that prison where you are, where the truth lies, where your true identity lies. 
So that was an image that came to me, that, that need of prisoners to keep going back and forth into the prison, much as we do lifetime after lifetime coming back to the prison of identity. How about you, Calico? I see you have your hand up. What would you like to share? Um, you know, this is great. A Course in Miracles talks about how there is no death. And what I have been given is that the body will go to dust at some point because it appears that it is of the world and everything of the world is breaking down and will become dust eventually. What does not change is mind. Mind cannot die, it's eternal. And so if you really start looking at this and playing with this in your mind, it's like, because you know I go to heaven a lot in mind. So there is no death there. <laughs> mind is alive. Mind is always in this moment right now. And I mean, all I know is I had so much projection before and my focus was on the concept called calico, the body. And once I got beyond that going, oh, well, what am I fearful of? Because my mind is eternal and that's where I wanna live now. I don't wanna wait till you know, next week or next month or until some you know, psychic tells me it's the time to you know, do something. It's right now, if I am clear of my projections, not seeing error, only seeing love, that cannot die. Love cannot die. So I just needed to add that because it's, it's, a, it's a wild mind examination to really think, oh, so what am I so concerned with? And I know at one point in time, I was really focused on a lot of symptoms. And my I know mind, which was very well trained, would constantly come up with, oh, I know what that symptom is, not good. I may be go checking out and whatever. And I, I, I got clear information <laughs> on this. And I was told, it's like death of the body, once your mind is clear, is like the body slips away and the mind is happy still. And it's like there, it, it just doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> and it's like, and I just need to keep my mind as clearly as possible because this guidance said, once you're clear of the projection, death of the body looks like this. You fall asleep like you would for a nap. And, then, and I was told, and I'll be there to catch you and we'll walk off together. And it's like, I thought, oh, well, okay, nothing to fear there. <laughs> and so I just needed to add that this is a great topic. I love it. Thank you so much, all of you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. I, I know that there is a, a term, um, maybe you know, Ravi, uh, of when uh, a high guru makes the choice to lay their body aside and they- Maha Samadhi. Maha Samadhi. Great exit. Thank you. And they say, well, this is the date. This is when it's going to happen. I'm just going to lay down and, and shift into the next gear. And they just peacefully do exactly what, what you said. And it's the mind, as you said, the, the, the mind, you could use other words, the, the soul, but it, it's, it, it's that which identifies with the I am that is always true. The truth that is always true can slip from one place to another, can, can be wherever it chooses to be. At the moment, it's choosing to be in and through and as a body. But it's not going to always be that. I'm going to lay the body aside, and that's fine. There's, there doesn't have to be dramatic, especially when you realize I'm not my body. You know, it's like when you, when you choose to get another car or you, you even just leave your car at night. Do you mourn the fact that you're leaving your car? No, it's just a vehicle. The body is just a vehicle of communication. That's all it is. 
And here in this moment, we can use it to express love and to just be true, truly present with one another. What else, what other purpose could we possibly have that's not completely insane? Because <laughs> everything else is completely insane. Just look out at the world. Let's use the body and the personality for the only sane purpose there is to express love. And if you find yourself not doing that, catch yourself and choose again. How simple is salvation? All right. Thank you, everyone. Ah, let's just take a deep breath together. And slip into that holy, sacred space. Where we are one. Where there is no when or then. But right now. We choose that now. And we choose to turn over everything to the one that knows everything. Call it the Holy Spirit. Call it the Comforter. Whatever you choose, let it be right now, stepping in to that holy divine current. So we're gonna say goodbye to all of you on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us here at Namaste Village. And we're going to go ahead